Hi, my name's Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Recently, I was trying to use my SDR to pick up some weather satellites, and unfortunately, although it was working, it wasn't very clear because there was a lot of noise. And despite turning up the gains on the SDR uh, software, it really didn't make a bit of difference. So I obtained this. It was a good price. It was about a fiver, and this is a low noise amplifier and before I rip the package is there anything useful on it? It says it's an SPF 5189 and there are a variety of these and they come in a variety of flavours and strengths and all of this. Um, I believe this one is to supposedly to give you a 0 0.6 decibel gain and it has the range 50 to 4,000 megahertz. It looks like we're going to have to zoom right in today to get any chance of seeing that. But you can see it right there, the SPF 5189Z, and the frequency is 50 to 4 gigahertz, 50 megs to 4 gigahertz at 5 volts. Now, you see the problem with it, you need to give it power. And that's not convenient though, if you have a PC set up, is it? Because, of course, you've got PC power and you need USB on this thing to be able to hook it up. Um, I'm not really sure why they just come with the uh, loose ends on the terminal. I suppose it's because perhaps you've got a bench power supply in some cases if you've got a radio set up. But I'm going to try to solder on a USB and that's mainly what this video is going to be about, but we are probably going to hook it up and see if we get any sort of gain on that satellite signal. The only downside with that, it takes, uh, I think, is it every six hours or something. There's several hours you get those NOAA satellites past the weather satellites, so you've got to catch them at the right time. So I'm going to look, it's really simple, I'm going to look for the positive and negative pins on this first, and this is a USB micro connector, and you should be pretty aware of them, to be honest with you. They're the precursor to the ones that we use now in the phones. And the reason I use them is one, because they're really handy to get hold of. You can get them anywhere. And two, they are quite robust and easier to solder on than the USB micro. And I wonder if that's why we still see them today in actually quite a lot of designs, or perhaps it's just legacy, but they're still available. It's not a problem. You can get them, you can get the leads, you can get everything you need to deal with them. So I'm just snipping off the leads and I'm going to do one quick sanity check again on the polarity. So that's why I've got it hooked up to power and I've got a meter here. It's going to turn that back on again. And I think it was this left one was the positive. Yes, it is. And the ground, are we connected to anything? No, ground's floating. So we've got the positive here on the now right, so we flip it over. So that's really what we want, something like that. And again, I will zoom in, I do apologise, you can see it. Um, but we have to be a bit cautious in a way because we do have a rather large ground plane type thing, which is the shell of the USB port. And I'm kind of wanted to bond that to the PCB a little bit, but I guess we really just want it floating, so I might have to make some sort of arrangement with some adhesives, which I'm not quite pleased with. But I think the first things first is to probably just solder it on, and we'll worry about some of those in a moment. I've just uh, noticed, I was just like looking at that because I was curious, does it have in and out written on it? Because I'm not sure which way around that goes. So one will go from your antenna, and then that will then go into your receiver. I'm just getting the old soldering iron. Mr. Mr. Heaty is ready. I think today I'm going to use some leaded solder and I'm going to apply heat to the pads. Let's get those really tinned up nicely like that. I don't really know what's underneath there. It could be something super simple, like just a little transistor or some inductors or something like that. Who knows? We're going to put that like there. So you've got to worry sometimes when you're doing stuff like that if you're going to get noise from your PC and things. So as this is going to probably be plugged into, I think, a separate 
bench USB type supply. I think we'll probably be okay. But again, I'm no expert on any of this, so your mileage may vary. And if you know a more optimal way of doing it, please let me know down below. Because, for example, if I could connect this outer shell to ground, I should, because it'd be really good. It'd be really strong to do that. And what I'm going to do is just tin that bottom pad. And I guess that's it, really. We could just apply power, and it should work. Um, I'm not going to apply power, though, while it's on the bench. If you have concerns about the strength of that, and you should have concerns about it, um, well, let me have a little think. Maybe we can address that right now. And that's all working nicely. I've checked the power, it works good. And just to show you how I addressed that issue, dum dum dum, Veraboard, of course. What I've done is I've actually just put a piece of Veraboard oriented this way so none of the signals go through because we don't want to short anything out. And I've attached the ground of the ground plane here. I've scratched a little bit and sold it to the end track here. And that's the ground on the actual ground pad and I've just looped it around to here and that's it. I mean, if you really want to be belt on braces, you could probably put the positive onto here and then put a cut between these two tracks, but I don't think we need to. So now we can go over to the computer, hook it all up and see if it makes any difference at all. Just to go through my setup here, you can see my antenna coming from my discone on the roof. I have our amplifier here. A USB is connected to a hub that is actually currently turned off because it's switchable. And we have the Newelec, Newelec rather, SDR dongle. And we'll just load up SDR Sharp and see how that looks. So any moment now the satellite will start passing overhead. It will be above us for about 11 minutes. And in that time hopefully we'll get some decent data. I might have to fiddle around with some settings because I'm not entirely positive on some of these such as if the FM should be stereo or not and you might just hear in the background a little bit of noise that's the sound of the actual radio reception and you can see WX2IMG has actually started to pick up some stuff and just as a sanity check because I can't see any data actually coming through on the screen itself I'm going to turn off the amplifier the low noise amplifier and see what it looks like without it as the satellite starts passing overhead though you will see certain peaks and troughs starting to appear so I put the amplifier back on I think we'll leave it on and eagerly await to see what happens you can actually see in the software itself, it's indicating that we are 1 minute 17 into the 10 minutes 22 that the satellite will be around us. But I am not seeing anything. Okay, I finally managed to figure out how to sort this out. You can see when it's off, you don't get anything. When you turn our LNA on, you do. And I managed to achieve this by turning down the LNA gain in the actual dongle itself. So you're actually hearing sounds from space. These are the sounds of the NOAA satellite actually transmitting its data continuously forever and ever until it crashes into the Earth. And these are the images that you can actually pick up. It does take a little bit of time, but you can set up this software to sit there and automatically start recording. And with enough effort, you can get pretty decent pictures. So here, you can see this rather nice picture of Western Europe and the clouds on their way. And if you get several of these images in succession, you can put together an animation, much like you used to see on the weather broadcasts on television. So here we have an ADSB receiver software called RTL1090, coupled with a secondary bit of software called Virtual Ra Radar Server. And what these do together is the software on the left actually tracks aircraft and basically any results it has, it pushes out to virtual server to be able to interpret and then that provides a web server interface and that's what we see on the, the right. So any 
planes in the area you'd see in this list here on the left and any results on the right. The amplifier is off and you can see it's been on probably for about a minute now. I have not received anything. So what I'm going to do is hit the button to power up that amplifier in three, two, one, go. Let's see what happens. Wow, like instantly. That's instant. Look at that. All of a sudden we're tracking at least 14 aircraft now and they've just appear look at them just like magic appearing on the uh, the screen here that is absolutely fantastic actually I'm quite surprised um, these circles actually delineate 20 mile radiuses from your center point so I've put my center point as Oxford and you can see we're receiving 20 40 60 planes up to 80 miles out at the moment and I suspect that could vary they certainly could be a bit longer we could track something like this, like this is the Wizz Air flight to Hungary or a Wizz Air flight to Hungary. There's probably a few. And if we keep an eye on flights like that, you can actually see where they're going. And interestingly enough, the size of these pictures shows the size of the plane. So we have here a FedEx plane. So that's how you get your air mail. And there's an Air France going off to somewhere. And if you zoom in into certain areas like ooh, somewhere around here should be Heathrow. There's Heathrow Airport. Uh, often you get uh, an interesting um, array of planes, obviously doing their maneuvers, takeoffs, landing, all of those things. So I'm actually pretty impressed with, with that. That actually makes this much more usable. And you have to remember there are dedicated antennas for this. If you have a dedicated antenna for ADS-B and, and it's on your roof, I guarantee you'll probably get at least this performance, probably better. But I do not have an optimized antenna for it. Um, but I have to say, I know those antennas are cheap. You can get the cheapest in, I think, the Pi, Pi Moroni are doing one for £25. If that's all you're interested in, get one of those antennas. But for me, where I'm interested in more, you know, messing around, listening to everything, uh, I think this investment in this £5 amplifier certainly helps. But I suspect dedicated hardware might give you a bit more uh, interesting tracks here if you're curious at the manoeuvres about airports because... Uh, I'd like to see them circling and landing and doing all those things. I, I, I suspect if I just uh, watch this for a while, I'm going to lose uh, that kind of resolution uh, of information as these planes move in and out. And hopefully that's been of some use to you. It's been fun. Take care and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.